pasta, pasta, pasta. Never pasta, pasta. I often get asked, you know, what is your favorite food? And I love all foods, but pasta must be it because I can't imagine living without pasta. Well, today I'll teach you some of my pasta secrets and some simple techniques will give you spectacular finishes. <laughs> Buongiorno, benvenuti, welcome to my house, welcome to my kitchen, welcome to my world of Italian flavors. When I cook, I need around me, I need all these wonderful products, these wonderful aromas and smells. I begin with my sense of smell. I even take sometimes a nice sleeve of basil or whatever I have, I rub it on my hands and I just pass it in front of me, it just gets me going. So do that to yourself, stimulate yourself and then you'll really feel energized and ready to go and do what you need to do. Well, today we're going to do some pastas. Uh, I know that most of you have cooked pasta at some time or other, but this is the way I do pasta. I want to share with you my flavors, and they're really very simple, and you're going to be able to duplicate my flavor and maybe add some of yours. The first one we're going to do is the vermicelli with the seafood and vegetable sauce. Simple, by the time it takes to cook the pasta, the sauce is going to be ready. Now I have some water boiling here, of course, for the pasta. Uh, let me just salt that a little bit. Okay, even if you wash the salt, you must put a little bit of salt in the pasta, otherwise the pasta will be completely flat. And there's no way that you can get that flavor back into the pasta. Because pasta is only water and semolina flour and a little bit of salt. There's nothing else in there. So it's a neutral flavor. You need to just sort of liven it up with the salt. To begin with, we'll open up the clams with a little bit of heat here. You could shuck them if you're uh, handy or if that's uh, if you know how to do it but otherwise just open them in a little pan with a little bit of what I do is I just take a little bit of the same boiling water and just brush them and wash them and just put them in there now I they just can't have simple water I need to put something in there let me take some fresh thyme maybe I'll put a basil leaf right here okay and close it and let it steam and we'll begin to make the marinara sauce. Again, marinara is a very simple rendition of a tomato sauce. It is basically fresh tomatoes uh, or canned San Marzano tomato, which is the plum tomato. The canned ones are perfectly fine, and these are the canned ones. You take them and you just crush them with your hands. Again, food, I love to feel food, so feel free. It gives me a feeling, the texture of what I'm cooking this gives me an indication of how ripe they are, how much I need to cook them. And in this case, the seeds, I leave them right in the marinara. Olive oil, some garlic, crush. I crush it with my palm, you can crush it with a knife. But again, you crush it with the palm, you smell of garlic, and just sort of, there's a crescendo of aromas. There you go. The whole garlic clove crushed like that sort of gives you more of the flavor releases of the oils. And at the same time, your guests can pick it out or you, if you cannot digest garlic, if it repeats on you. Let me crush a little more. And here, the tomatoes, some people like a marinara, very chunky marinara, and that's perfectly fine. In that case, just don't crush it. Okay, again, for a little bit of zest, I add a little peperoncino, but I like a little zest in my sauce, the acidity, the sweetness, and the sort of kick of the peperoncino. A little salt, and we are going to let this just simmer. Okay, the clams are just beginning to keep them under steam, so they're, they're open, and you don't want to cook them, you just want them to open up, 
because clams cook very quickly. All seafood does, clams, scallops. So we're going to need a certain amount of speediness to cook in them. So as soon as they open up, you pull them off. Let me just check the clams. Oh, OK, yes, the clams are opened. Let me just pour them right in here so they can cool off. We're going to begin the beginning of the actual sauce. This is a scallop. What the scallop is is the muscle between the sh that hold the shell together. This is the actual muscle of the shell that hold the shell. And then there's a whole body of the scallop which we don't eat. There is just a little muscle here that you have to remove. Otherwise, everything is edible. Not that it's bad, it's just tough. So you remove it, and then you can cut it. Now, you can buy different um, scallops. I recommend you buy dry sea scallops. Dry sea scallops are scallops that have been harvested and sold in its natural waters. Because scallops sometimes, they're so delicate that they are preserved in a sort of milky solution. The flavor, the natural sweetness of the scallops is no longer there. You get this milky substance. And when you cook them, you see all this milky water running out, and they shrink half up to their normal size. So as for dry sea scallops, they're much more perishable, but they sense a stickiness that almost sugar substance is still stuck to them. The scallops important that you have a lot of pan space, if you will. OK. Lower it. And again, salt. OK, let's pull out the, the clams. If a clam doesn't open, discard it to the side. Whenever a mollusk with a clam or mussel doesn't open and you're cooking it, discard it to the side. Don't use it. See, I want that little caramelization and a little splatter around your stove, but you know, cook. And then the satisfaction of your family, I'm sure it's worthwhile, the cleanup. You can put whole clams. You can chop them up. Again, your preference. The scallops are nice and golden. I put the chopped clams. I added the blanched string beans. And blanching is, of course, just sort of partially cooking that in hot water and then putting them in ice water to sort of retain some of the colors. Uh, although here the greens will lose some of the color because of this acidity in the tomato sauce. But you know, so what? I'm after the flavor, even if the color isn't 100. OK, let's put some of the, the marinara sauce right in. And marinara actually cooks in 10, 15 minutes. Here it will continue to cook right in here, some of the, the water from the clam. OK. The water is boiling, and we should be putting some pasta. Now, these are vermicelli, a very thin spaghetti. Actually, the name vermicelli, vermo, means a little worm. Worm. I know it doesn't sound too good, but in Italian, it's a very endearing word for actually worm, vermicelli, almost simpatico, as we say, cute. So let me put the pasta to cook, because the sauce is almost ready. When you cook pasta, uh, again, make sure that there's enough water. Make sure that it is salted. There's two clams here. Let me not waste anything. Um, let me put a little more peperoncino here. A little bit of raw olive oil. Yeah. And I'm going to throw in um, just a whole branch of thyme. And what will happen is that the leaves will fall into the sauce, and then the stem itself you'll be able to remove. Now, seafood, I want to cook full speed. I want it open. I want all the water to evaporate. I want it to cook as quickly as, as possible. So when you cook pasta, make sure that the water is salted, that it is boiling vigorously when you put pasta in. You throw pasta in. You mix it right away. And then you cover it. What's important is to bring the boiling point of pasta back as soon as possible. You don't want the pasta to lay in there and lay in there because then it begins to stick. Uh, pasta needs to dance almost in the water uh, to be free. And I always get asked, do I put oil when I cook pasta? Absolutely not. You don't put oil when you cook pasta. The only exception is when you cook 
flat pasta, you want to make lasagna, fresh pasta. So then you don't want it to stick. You want the oil. You want it separate so you can lay it. But every other pasta, you absolutely do not want oil because what you really want is, as the pasta cooks, there's a thin layer of starch around the pasta that is almost sticky. I mean, you all hear, heard, throw the pasta to the wall. When it sticks to the wall, it's done. Why? Because that little layer of starch is where the sauce will adhere to. So if you put oil, you coat that, and you don't get that effect. If you rinse your pasta, if you cook it, again, you're wasting all that good starch and the quality that you really want in pasta. So don't rinse your pasta, and don't put oil when you're cooking. Okay. All right, the pasta is just done. Now, I toss my pasta always a little bit in the sauce. I take half of the sauce, I put it in a sauté pan, and I toss the pasta. So therefore, I leave the pasta just a notch al dente. See how wonderful the sauce came? Let me remove these are the, the thyme. OK, and let me just drain the pasta since it's ready. OK? So always away from you. You pour away from you. You want to get as much of the water out of the pasta because otherwise it'll dilute the intensity of your sauce. Okay, hot stuff. And again, let's pour it right in the. Okay, let me just saute. Okay, add just a little bit of oil. Again, I love the flavor of fresh olive oil. And if you cook it, you change it, because again, the oils, the aromas uh, sort of dissipate and fly away. But when you get it like this at the end, you will be able to taste it in the pasta. You have to get good olive oil, of course. And now I'm adding some parsley. I think my, my passion, no, I think, I know. My passion for food came really during my formative years when I spent a lot of time with my maternal grandmother and grandfather. And they lived in, small t in a small town um, outside of Pola. And uh, they, did, they grew everything we ate. We made olive oil. We made, uh, they grew the wheat for the flour. So I had an opportunity to really see food from the ground up and to understand how it grows and to understand what makes it what it is. And I remember the olive oil when it was and actually it was by the mill, by the stone mill, and it would run down, and they would put a little bit of hot water, and what we used to do, we used to dunk fresh hot bread in that warm oil, and the flavor of that is so embedded in my mind that I look for it whenever I cook. But that's what flavors really are, you know? Um, it's, it's like a reference library. Now, let me go back to the serving of the pasta. First of all, when you serve pasta, again, the plate needs to be warm. You can't put good pasta on a cold plate. You need to maintain the heat of the pasta. I like a fondina, a deep plate, which keeps the pasta contained. You notice that I'm turning it, making it into a nest-like formation. They're called nido. This way, the pasta stays warmer for longer periods of time in your dish itself. And it looks good, rather than you know running all over the plate. So you make this nice little mounds again. And you know, you could substitute the vegetables, maybe string beans or peas or whatever. That's the freedom that I really want to give you. Uh, you need to feel that you can do this. I sort of led you to do this, but then your personality, whatever you have, whatever is fresh, you don't have to get exactly this. You can do shrimps and broccoli the same way. Why not? Okay. Uh, may I drizzle a little bit of olive oil? I would do it this way, just a little bit. And it looks like I'm doing a lot, but I'm really not at the end. OK. Uh, these are haricot very thin. They just split open. And I left some just to put on top you know, because the visual part is so important. Okay, now do you think that you guessed 
or your family might enjoy something like this? I think so. Enjoy. <laughs> Zitti in cartoccia, what is that? I'm actually mixing the zitti, which are already cooking. They're halfway there. Cartoccio is a bag, a paper bag. And what we're going to do is we're going to sauce the zittis, put them in a bag, sort of, and bake them in the oven. What you need for this is parchment paper, about an arm's length of parchment paper, and you bend it over. And you can cook, I'm going to show you pasta, but you can cook fish in this, you can cook chicken. Uh, and it's it really a, a show because everything is captured in there, all the aroma and everything. You put it in front of your guests, and then it just explodes in their face. What you need is to butter slightly this. So you take a bar of butter, sort of semi-soft, and you just lightly butter. That's fine. Here we have the marinara sauce as a base, and it is basically the same marinara that we made for the previous recipe. And when you make marinara, you saw how simple it is, make that extra batch. Put it in containers, put it in the freezer, and then your next pasta meal is only 10 or 15 minutes away. Again, I like to saute my pasta. I don't like to pour sauce over pasta. I like the pasta to absorb the sauce. So therefore, I leave it a little bit undercooked, and then I saute it in the sauce itself. In the sauce, there is the marinara, the basic garlic, olive oil, and fresh tomatoes crushed. And then I add some margarine, a lot of those fresh herbs. I have some in here already for flavor, but I'm going to add some more just for that sort of last minute freshness effect. And as I was telling you before, when I taste something, it's something really good. I really focus on that taste, visually, with my sense of smell, my olfactory, and then my taste buds. I take it once, I take it twice, and I really record that, and I file it away. And then, when I'm cooking, that optimal taste that I've tasted someplace along the line that's in my reference sort of haunts me. And when I cook, I have to get there. So when those two meet, meet the optimal flavor that you have recorded, and what you're cooking, the bells go off. You have the right thing. So, okay, let's chop. <laughs> Roughly chop is fine. I'll split it evenly here and there. Okay. The pasta is just about ready. I want it a little bit undercooked because it's going to cook a little bit in the sauce, and then ultimately in the oven. This thing here, we call it in Italian ragno, which is the spider. Cost $2 maximum, but you must have one. It's so practical, uh, especially when you're cooking short pastas. You know, there's the category of the long pastas, the spaghettis, the linguinis. There's the category of the short pastas. And this is wonderful to fish out dry pasta this way. You don't have to drain it, and all those starches remain on the. Okay. Not too watery. I like most of the sauce to be adhered to the pasta, not soupy. I'll add some at the end on top. Okay. I'm gonna shut off the fire, add some parmigiano. Parmigiano Reggiano. When you begin this, preheat the oven. You need a hot oven at uh, 475. You can rest these either in an oven-proof baking dish or on a long baking pan, and you can align them and bake them like that. But I think it's wonderful once they're in this dish, you present it right in front of your guests. Mm. about one portion full. Okay, sort of 
settled in the center. I was thinking about a little sauce, but I think it might have enough sauce, maybe just a little more. And then we top it off with bocconcini di mozzarella. What are bocconcini? Boccone is one bite in Italian. Bocconcini is little bites of mozzarella. They're wonderful to have with, the, if you serve it with plum tomatoes or whatever. But if you don't have bocconcini or you can't find them, get a hole and then cut it in little cubes. and It'll do just as well. And you s I sort of nestle them in. And you know, you could pour it is fine. If you'd like to put some more, you could do that. And then you take it and you wrap it as you would almost the sandwich. Make sure that you wrap it tight because what you want, you want the sting to stay there. You don't want that to escape because that's the fun. When you open it up and all that really hits you in the face, it's good for your skin too. You know they say that steam is good for your skin. <laughs> fold it over on the side. And again, you fold it over on the, the other side, almost like a sandwich. Let it leave a little room because it'll puff up and you set it right in the baking dish and it goes in the oven like this. And you want to bake it for 20 minutes. The ziti should be perfectly ready, steaming ready. Okay. Let's begin with this one. If you want to serve each guest one by themselves, then you serve it in the container that you put it in the oven. Take the scissors and just snip the end. The parchment paper will sort of shred and crumble, but what's a little paper with good pasta? Okay. And then set it in front of them just like that and let them unroll it. The steam is coming slowly. There it is. And just spread it apart and they can enjoy it. This is the one that we put with the tomatoes. The other way that you can serve it is if you'd like to let them serve themselves. So what you do, you put the same procedure, snip the side, okay, open it themselves mm, like this, give it a nice serving spoon, set it between them and let them serve themselves. Mm, the aroma of all the herbs coming out, it just makes you begin to salivate. A little basil on the side. We have again this little pomodorini. But I think the fun of this is really letting your guests get into it, letting the aroma really come into their nostrils, and then sharing this. I mean, sharing food, it's a communication of emotions. At for Lydia once, I had a customer, and he was a good customer, and he says, Lydia, I'm having some special guest. I've never met them before. They're business guest. Uh, I want you to do everything. I don't want to have to worry about the meal. So you know what I did the first thing? The first course, they were all strangers, mind you. The first course, I made a family style service. I put everything in the middle of the table. So they had to pass, they had to share. So the barrier between being strangers and baking bread was broken. And right away there was a talk at the table. So use food and the service of food for communicating emotions such as that, for setting stages for uh, the openness and communication. This certainly is going to be one of those because most likely they're going to feel the hat, they're going to say, ouch, the aroma is going to tempt them, and here we are. And so, as we say at my house, Cin cin e tutti a tavola, a mangiare. Mmm, buono. Mm.